So I finished part one of this video by showing that after a start frame command, four bytes of zero, you can turn the first LED on with four bytes of all ones, but the second LED appears to need five bytes. Well now, why is that? And the answer has to do with the clock line. If I put an LED between clock and ground on this first pixel LED, my red LED with a 1K resistor lights up. If I put it on the second LED, it doesn't. The third one, my LED lights up, but not the fourth. The fifth one lights up, if I can get it connected properly, but not the sixth. So what's actually happening here is that each LED inverts the clock signal. So clock out from the first LED is the inverse of clock in, and clock out from the second LED inverts it again. So what's the point of this inversion? The connection between the Arduino and the first LED looks like this. We set the data stable, and then we raise the clock from a low to a high. However, D out, I'll call it DO, will actually change the data at this point. So it'll look like that. The data will change at the precise instant that clock goes from low to high. And that's because the circuitry inside the LED is completely static. The only thing that can initiate a change of output state is a clock transition from low to high. Now when you feed this into the next LED, the last thing you want is unstable data at the point where the clock goes from low to high. So in fact, it changes the clock signal, so it goes from low to high here, and high to low here. So this is the uh, rising edge, this is the rising edge. So you can see that now the data going into the second LED is stable when the clock goes from low to high. However, the clock between the first LED and the second LED has been delayed by half a clock cycle. So if the data is delayed by half a clock cycle per LED, then my entire strip of 60 LEDs, we should end up, by the time we get to here, with 30 clock cycles of delay, half a clock cycle per LED. Now I've added some extra coins here so that I can do more than just my byte of zeros and byte of ones. Let's put in, you can put as many of these in as you want actually, um, lots of bytes of zeros to uh, be my start frame. Now this one, puts out four bytes uh, for red, four bytes for green, that won't show up of course immediately, four bytes for blue. And if I keep putting red, green, blue, and do this enough times to completely fill up the strip, I'm not sure if you'll see round this side up in this top corner, they're starting to light up. And then I'll bring the strip up here. Now that must have been uh, 60 uh, sets of 32 bits and we're one short. So now the question is, how many additional clock cycles will it take to light up that last LED? And I can put in these end frame bytes by hitting my second coin. So that's eight additional clock cycles, 16 additional clock cycles, 24, still not enough, but 32 does it. And in fact, we know from the fact that we lose half a clock cycle per LED, that for the 60th LED, we'd need 30 additional clock cycles. Now I've just been through the same process again. I've pressed my colored coins here 60 times. So I've put out 60 times 32 bits. And uh, once again, I'm one LED short. Now this time, instead of putting an end frame out uh, with bytes of ones, let's put an end frame out with bytes of zeros, an end frame that's kind of a start frame. Let's see if it works. Eight bits, 16, 24, 32. And the last LED lights up. Now because I've put out four bytes of zeros, my first LED is now ready to accept new data. So it's just occurred to me that Instead of putting out an end frame, it makes far more sense to put out a start frame. And if I had more LEDs, 
I'd simply put out more of these bytes of zero data. It doesn't turn any of the LEDs off, and it means that uh, we don't now have to put out an end frame and a start frame. We just put out a start frame, and that's quicker. So as I said in part one, this end frame is actually very misleading. Not only uh, should it not be 32 bits, it should be the number of bits, which is half the number of LEDs you have. It seems to me that it's actually unnecessary. You can just simply put out a new start frame. Yes, you won't be able to put any more data in the string, but then of course the string's already completely full. And that saves time and you're ready then to put out your next frame. Can't see the point of this end frame, all very misleading. So that's my first look at the APA 102 pixel, pixel addressable LED. Um, I've actually implemented another button now. If I put in a start frame and hit that, it puts out all hundreds of bytes to uh, completely write nothing to the entire string. And now if I go back and start again, I can put out my colors again. I think I slipped there actually. Never mind. But uh, I think I will return to the APA 102 because it's great fun playing with it like this. No, I think I got it right. Anyway, that's it for the moment, so cheerio.